welcome once again to our time of worship this morning uh, on Sunday the 6th of September. A really warm welcome wherever you are and whenever you're tuning in to this service. And we're filming live here this morning, coming to you from Roseville Parish Church this morning. We are amazingly in the month of September. We don't know how that happened uh, all of a sudden. And also beckons, does it not, with the shorter evenings coming upon us. But uh, in relation to that, I wonder if we could just say that at the Mount's Garden, I have lots and lots of apples. And so this is a wee announcement for you. If you would like to please do get in touch. Uh, that would be absolutely super to be able to share those out for those who would like them. But we continue today in our little series on life and worship in the early church. And our theme today is going to be hospitality in the early church. And also today we have the celebration of communion together in the service. If that's something that you weren't aware of or that you forgot about, then you might want to take a few moments now just to go and get uh, yourself uh, arrange a little bit of bread on a plate and a glass of wine or juice and just so you have those ready for when we come to communion later on in the service. But together let's have a moment of stillness as we come together to worship God. And we gather together in the words of Psalm 115 for our call to worship today. You might like to join in those words which are on the screen. As we say together, not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory because of your love and faithfulness. Praise be to you, O Lord. And so let's together worship God this morning as we join our hearts in heartfelt praise to God in singing our opening hymn number 694, Brother, Sister, Let Me Sing.
praising you. We come before you with gladness and thanksgiving. We praise your goodness, we praise your love, we praise your faithfulness. We are yours and we worship you together today. We bless your name forever. We come before you, gracious God, just as we are today. We come with our weaknesses and our anxieties. We come with our fears and worries. We come with doubt and with faith. We come to you, the King of love, through the way opened for us by your Son, Jesus Christ, and in the power of your Spirit. Lord, you have loved us as a shepherd tends his sheep, but we have strayed from your way. You have called us to love one another as you have loved us, and yet we find it so hard to manage. Time and again we are forgetful of others' needs. We are impatient, critical of each other. May you forgive us, we pray. Thank you for your patience with us, Lord. Thank you for the work of your Holy Spirit within us who encourages us to grow and to change, reminding us of your vast love for us and helping us love you and those around us with a deepening devotion. May you fill us afresh now by your Spirit and lead us in our time of worship as we listen and as we respond. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I'm grateful to Jim McCabe now, who's going to bring our reading for us this morning, which comes from the book of Acts once again. And it follows on from Peter's sermon to the crowd at Pentecost, when many, many people turned uh, to faith in Jesus Christ. And we learn now in our passage of the life shared by the believers in Jerusalem at that time. Many miracles and wonders were being done through the apostles, and everyone was filled with awe. All believers continued together in close fellowship and shared their belongings with one another. They would sell their property and possessions and distribute the money among all according to what each one needed. Day after day they made as a group in the temple and they had their meals together in their homes, eating with glad and humble hearts, praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And every day the Lord added to their group those who were being saved. Amen. And may God add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. We continue in our series on life and worship in the early church today and come to the theme of hospitality in the early church. We've thought in recent weeks about prayer in the early church and then mission in the early church. And just as we saw that those two practices were linked for the early believers, so we'll see today how hospitality flowed out of and alongside prayer and mission in the church community. In the unfolding story of Acts, the disciples gathered in expectant prayer before being filled with the promised Holy Spirit, and they were then empowered by the Spirit to go out into the streets of Jerusalem to tell of God's mighty deeds. 
his ongoing desire to rescue and save the lost. And that all culminated in the coming of his son Jesus, who willingly and lovingly gave up his life on the cross for us, to take away all our selfishness and waywardness that separates us from God. Jesus took it all away in a way we could never do ourselves. And through faith in him, for the early believers in Jerusalem and ourselves, we freely receive abundant forgiveness and all the promise of new life in Jesus, committedly throwing ourselves into a new path in life, the path of following Jesus, his teaching, and his example of devoted love for God and selfless love for others. It was in that devoted love for God and selfless love for others that the early believers offered ongoing hospitality to one another. As we read this morning, every day the believers continued to meet together in the temple courts. They broke bread in their homes and ate together with glad and sincere hearts, praising God and enjoying the favour of all people. We gain a picture here of worship, fellowship and hospitality being very much woven together in the practices of the early church. Knowing themselves forgiven through faith in Jesus and offered fullness of life in following him rather than going their own way now in life. There is a joy and thankfulness that fills all that they do, even as they are filled and carried along by the Holy Spirit. They have experienced Jesus' love for them and through the Holy Spirit's presence in their hearts and their lives, there comes the desire and enabling to love even as they are loved by Jesus. Such love doesn't come in their own strength, and couldn't be sustained in their own strength. But through the inspiration and leading of the Holy Spirit, in the gratitude of their hearts, genuine love for each other day by day becomes a real expression of knowing Jesus' love in their lives. As we read last week, Jesus said to his disciples at their last meal together, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. And it's worth pausing to think, how much does Jesus love me? It's one of those things that we can pass over quite lightly at times. If we think about the wonderful children's hymn, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. It's something we've known and sung since we were children, and because it's so familiar, just like saying the Lord's Prayer that we were thinking about a few weeks ago, we lose sight of the height and depth of its words. How much does Jesus love me, you, each of us? His death on the cross gives us surely the clearest answer, stripped away to its very raw truth that Jesus was willing to face such torture, shame and agony for each of us to set us right with God makes the depth of his love starkly clear. Just as I have loved you, you also are to love me, to love one another, Jesus said. With the same selfless, sacrificial, costly love, the disciples and the early church were called to love each other, and they did just that in their ongoing fellowship and hospitality together, not just on a Sunday, but throughout the week. As F.F. F. Bruce says in his commentary, the believers met for public worship and witness in the temple each day. But it was more convenient to share the Lord's Supper, the breaking of bread, 
and a communal meal together in their own homes in smaller gatherings. After more formal worship in the temple, we might suppose that different people would gather spontaneously in different homes from one time to the next, with a widening net of friendship and fellowship developing in their common love for the Lord Jesus. The phrase they ate with glad and sincere hearts can also be expressed as eating with generosity of heart, expressing a sense of open welcome and each one looking out for the other. There was a place at the table for everyone, even as the Lord was adding to their number each day those who were being saved. And mealtimes can be such precious times to gather with others, whether as a family or with friends, with colleagues or neighbours. It can be a time to stop for a while, to catch up, to share, to hear stories, to listen. A time to get to know others better. And, and all built around the mutual refreshment and enjoyment of sharing a good meal together. That's why it can be so sad today for families, especially perhaps, when mealtimes are invaded and taken over by mobile phones or television. And opportunities to share, to speak and listen, to value each other and hear how things are going. The highs and lows of the day are being lost. Fellowshipping over meals in each other's homes was an intentional time for the early church community to be together more freely than in the temple and to continue to encourage each other in what they were learning, to share together and make sure that all felt welcomed and accepted. It would be a valuable time to hear each other's stories and to be able to pray with and for each other. Sharing so much hospitality as church families in our busy world may not be quite so feasible today. However, we probably can all think of those within the church family that we don't know so well for one reason or another. They perhaps sit in a different part of the church or they've joined the church more recently and we haven't had that opportunity to properly speak to them and find out a bit more about them. For many of us, there could be scope to invite that person or that couple over for a coffee or a meal or to arrange a good time to visit a family so that we can continue to build our relationships, hear each other's stories and become more aware of each other's needs in expressing love for each other as a church family. And what about those friends and neighbours we may be aware of who are open to know more about Jesus? Conversation over a mealtime can be a meaningful but relaxed way to share with them further and encourage their response of faith. COVID-19 has brought and continues to impact our ability to share hospitality just now. Being safely face to face has proved much more difficult. And yet it has been possible to be and become increasingly creative, initially making phone calls to each other, meeting in the garden or on the doorstep, beginning now though to have a few people together again in our homes. We can begin to think of having a few friends or neighbours over now for coffee, which is wonderful. Following the early church, we might also be encouraged to think about joining with a few others from two households to watch the Sunday service on YouTube together, enjoying spontaneous worship and fellowship together in our own homes. And that would be very special, particularly with those who have been otherwise unable to join and view the services online. It's an expression of love and care and fellowship, just like the early church in their own homes. Taking time to reflect on Jesus' words, just as I have loved you, you also are to love one another. 
can lead us in the area of hospitality to explore how we can each deepen expressions of welcome, of love and care across our church family so that all really feel they belong and are valued very much for each one there is a place at the table. And we pause now and join to sing our next hymn, which is number 685, For Everyone Born, A Place at the Table.
We thank you, Lord, for all those things around us for which we are grateful in the everyday, for family and friends, for rest and recreation, for creativity and beauty, for science and learning, for music and song, for kindness and generosity. Loving God, when we are frightened, give us courage. When we are disturbed, bring us calm. When we sit in darkness, show us the beginnings of dawn. When we want to retreat to be quiet, not just back and bring, us, bring life to others. When we are tempted to hold what we have, open our hands to share. May you remind us again and again that we have power, power to heal the earth and its people. May we use that power in love and service as Christ showed us. May you surprise us with glimpses of your work around us, making all things new. May we yearn to be part of that working alongside you, to heal creation with you and to express your welcome and care for all those around us. Gracious God, for those who are bound down by war and violence, we pray their rescue and your encouragement for individuals and organisations that work for reconciliation. May truth prevail over lies and peace over welfare. We pray for those who are hungry, perpetually hungry, something most of us have never known. May we be intentional about giving generously to community developments and to projects that, pe that help people to help themselves towards a more bountiful tomorrow. For example, in places like Beirut, Syria and of course much closer to home. We remember those who are sick and those in the caring professions. For those who call for help in different ways that they may find you near at hand. To help for many reasons like those children held at home during lockdown in very challenging situations. We pray also for those who can't find paid work or apprenticeships, those who fear losing their jobs and livelihoods. May they find fresh ideas through friends and colleagues, new ways of working that provide new opportunities and to try and never give up. Heavenly Father, your Son Jesus endured shame and suffering, the violence of those who misunderstood your will. May you work a wonder in the hearts of angry people, that hatred may turn to gentleness, bitterness to calm, and fear to faith. That all may experience safety and understanding, compassion and hope, for example, in the contemporary refugee crisis. That all may experience safety, for the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As we come to share communion now, we can reflect on how wonderfully Jesus offers hospitality. Perhaps the most wonderful occasion of all was the, at the feeding of the 5,000. But again, we were thinking about a few weeks ago together. Having compassion on the crowd, Jesus saw them as sheep without a shepherd. He took time, first of all, to nourish them spiritually encouraging and challenging them with his words, his teaching. Then he nourished them physically, giving thanks to God and sharing out five loaves and two fish until all miraculously had had enough. Jesus' hospitality invites us always to see and remember who he is. Just as he provides an abundance of physical nourishment, so spiritually, he is all we need. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with them and they with me. And he also said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry. As we choose to turn from going our own way in life and instead open the door of our hearts and lives to invite Jesus in as shepherd and king, as Lord and saviour, we are blessed with the ongoing spiritual nourishment we need, embracing his teaching and his abiding presence 
In order to help us become more and more Jesus' faithful followers and servants. In this celebration of communion, may wherever you are seated now become the Lord's table for you. Hopefully you have a little bread and a little wine or juice ready to partake. Today, as also for last time, when I break the bread and eat it, would you do that too? And when I take the cup and drink it, would you do that also at the same time? And we begin together by saying the affirmation of faith, which you may wish to join in with the words on the screen. We say together, we are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the Church, to celebrate God's presence, to love with respect all creation to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. This is the table of the Lord. Come not because you must, but because you may. Not because you are strong, but because you are weak. Come not because any goodness of your own gives you a right to come, but because you need mercy and help. Come because you love the Lord a little, and would like to love him more. Come because he loved you and gave himself for you. Come and meet the risen Christ who longs to affirm us each anew. We do this remembering that on the night Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and took wine. And so we take this bread and this wine for this holy use and mystery. And as Jesus gave thanks to God before he broke the bread, so we join our hearts now and offer thanksgiving to God. Let us pray. It is indeed right, it is our duty and our joy, at all times and in all places, to give you thanks and praise. Holy Father, Heavenly King, Almighty and Eternal God. For your kindness to us and your goodness to all, we give you thanks. We thank you that you showed your love by sending your Son, who gave his life for us and rose again from death, and lives to pray for us forever. We thank you that he has taken away all that separates us from you and has made us friends with you and with one another. We thank you that he has brought us together at his table to encourage us by his presence and strengthen us by his love. And so by the mighty working of your Holy Spirit, may this bread which we break be for us a sharing in the body of Christ and this cup which we drink be a sharing in his blood, so that feeding on him in our hearts, our faith in him and our love for him may be renewed afresh, and we may be his faithful followers, showing us, showing his love in the world. Amen. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and he said, 
This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Do this in memory of me. Whenever you, we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Let us pray. Loving God, we praise you for your goodness to us at our Lord's table. You have fed us with the bread of life made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth, and assured us of your everlasting love. Renewed in body, mind and soul, help us follow more closely in the steps of Christ and spread his love and hope wherever we go. And we ask these things in his name. We join together to sing again, and our closing hymn today is number 668, According to Thy Gracious God.
much for uh, all joining in our time of worship today and for joining in the communion together. And my very grateful thanks go to our two gyms today, to Jim McKay and Jim Pride for taking part in today's service. And also to our production team for bringing everything together and for twipping the knobs and pressing the buttons to make everything possible uh, and everything happen at the right moment for today. May you know the Lord's leading and his upholding with you in the week ahead. And we close now with words of blessing. Renewed in Christ, may you go to serve, go to love, through hospitality in word and deed. Go to bring welcome, go to bring peace. Go to encourage, go to offer care. And may you go in the strength of the Father, in the power of Jesus, united by the Spirit, now and forever.